Hello everyone, Troy here with the Fallen Flags. Um, I've had a request on the JMRI program and how to add sensors. Um, with the Digitrax setup, um, it automatically recognizes whether if you plug in a BDL-168 or a, or a DS-64. <clears throat> and the way to go ahead and find out that stuff is to, when you open up your JMRI program, you have an option over here that says Tools. And underneath Tools, you'll want to go down to Tables. And underneath Tables, you can go down to, like right now, I'm going to uh, program one of my BDL-168s. Now, I haven't assigned my BDL-168 with a, an actual ad uh, address. So, this one, I don't know if you guys can actually see this or not. Um, let's see for now, see if I can get you guys a little bit closer here. Um, these ones here, you have LS1 through LS16. That's just a factory setting when you go ahead and you plug in your BDL-168 through LocoNet. Um, these ones down over here, there's a, um, it starts off at 4049 and it goes down to 4064. That's my other BDL-168. Now, over here towards the right, it says the state of it, and it'll say whether if it's active or inactive and what's going on with your layout. Now, over here, I have a basic layout drawn up. It's nothing finalized or anything else. We'll take this and we'll move, whoops, we'll move that right there on over. We'll get rid of that. This is my basic design of the layout. And if you notice right up over here, this is all highlighted. Well, that's because there's a train sitting there. This is my valley. Now, what I have actually done is I've actually taken my rolling stock and I've installed resistor wheel sets on them. Now, I'm going to take a car off here really quick and kind of show you guys what I have done. Now, all my rolling stock, I put Fox Valley uh, wheel sets on these. These are microtrains trucks. And, um, I picked up some resistors, they're really small resistors that go up on there. What I've done is just put a little bit of drop of glue on there and I'll probably do up a how-to video on this. And um, drop glued on the resistor and then I used a, uh, a conductive pen to go ahead and paint on the uh, conductive material to go ahead and make, make it go ahead and create electri electrical current to go ahead and come through. Um, the reason why I've done it this way is so that when we're running our layout, we can tell right where our trains are, if they're in the clear or not, inside of our hidden areas, because we got so much of it. Otherwise, we won't know exactly what's going on or where the tr end of the train really even is sitting. So when you go to stop a train inside of a hidden area, we'll know that that train is sitting in the clear and not have to go ahead and worry about another train coming back up on it and creating any problems or hassles up there inside the hidden areas. So I'm going to go ahead and, and we're going to move this train forward through here. And I'll show you guys how this, let me move this here again. I will take and run a train coming through. And if you guys watch down up over here, this right here will all start to highlight as I come through on all the different areas. One of the problems that I've noticed though with any of this stuff is that you have to, anytime you go ahead and you have something that's going in, you have to go ahead and enter in your occupancy sensor inside of each section wherever there's a dot, even on your turnouts. If you want those right there to highlight, you have to enter in your sensor inputs in there also along with naming your block. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this train here. There's the train. We're going to roll this thing on through and um, get it to come around through our south end loop, down through our hidden staging area, and then we're going to come back over here to my depot area on the layout. <clears throat> See if I can get this a little bit closer here for you guys. Now it's inside that loop down over here on the layout. Now we're going to be coming up over through the main line, coming down through our staging area now. And as that train rolls through, you'll notice that both sections will highlight until the train is actually cleared. 
Now the train's just entered into this other loop, and if you notice right down here, there's no sensor that's been entered in right here. That's one part that I kind of forgot to go ahead and do. So everything else is all highlighted except for that area. Now the train just cleared this. Now we're going to come up and around through the front part of the layout up over here. We're going to be coming down this track, which has not been entered in yet. And I'll show you guys how to go ahead and enter all that information in. Now we're up over here coming up through. This is showing me that these are all my actual routes. I don't have any of my turnouts programmed yet inside this program. Now we're clear of the staging down over here. Now we're going to enter in over here. Now as I enter into it, there won't be no no lights on it because why well, it's not programmed. So right now that train is in. I'm actually sitting into two different sections. Now in order to find out what section that is, um, if you don't know your wiring and how you've done it, the BL-160 is actually pretty darn simple on how to use it. Um, starting at the far right of the board, as you're looking at it, your plugins are all at the top. At the far right would, would be your A section, and then it goes on through. So inside my A would be A, L, S, 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's my A section. Then my B section comes down over here for the next four, and then C for the next four, and so forth and so on for all these occupancy indications. Now this one is an LS8. This is the next one that I'm going to go ahead and program up in here. Now I'm going to back up this train here just a little bit, and we'll watch the, uh, I'll go ahead and put it back over here inside the other section. Whoops. And this right here just went to inactive. Once again, inactive, and now we're active. Okay, so this right here is the LS8. That's the section I'm rolling up on, which is right here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and right click on that. We're going to go to edit. I'm going to go ahead and enter in a block name. I'm actually going the wrong direction here on this, but we're going to go ahead and enter. Um, let's see, you know, we'll close right there back. What I entered on this one. Uh, we'll put down uh, Eastbound Depot, Edit, Eastbound Depot. Now I believe you can go ahead and change this stuff at any point in time. This is just all temporary for me here. Then you'll want to go ahead and click on Create Edit Block. As you can see here, I put down Eastbound Depot, Create Edit Block. That's going to bring up another screen. Then it's going to want my my occupancy sensor, and then I'll go ahead and I'll double check it. My sensor down over here, being that it's active, is LS8. So now I'll go back up over here. LS8. Now one thing I've noticed is that with these occupancy sensors. If you don't have it capitalized, it does make a difference. For some reason, it does not want to recognize. So it is case sensitive when you enter in this, this kind of information. So now I've entered in my LS8, and when Digitrax recognizes everything, it puts all them letters up into capital, uh, all up into caps lock. So I just enter in everything in caps lock. This right here, I don't have to worry about it. Now here I have my track color. My original track color is black. You can change that to any color that you want to use. My Occupy track color, I'm going to go down over here, I'm going to pick yellow. We'll change that over to yellow. Alternate track color, I'm not too sure exactly how that right there works. You can just go ahead and click on Done. Click on Done here. Now you notice that right here, I now have occupancy through this section. Now this section is actually a standalone section because my occupancy actually comes up through this whole section right through here. I, my, my actual occupancy stops at this turnout here, and then at this point in this turnout here, and then back over here there's actually another turnout right where it ends. So that's now my new occupancy section. So now if I go ahead and if I back up this train, and I bring it back up over here to this section, it will then go ahead and turn off. Now if I go ahead and if I pull it forward again, we'll go ahead and we'll light up as soon as we get up into that section. Then it'll actually go ahead and stay, this one right here will stay lit until my box car actually goes ahead and clears. I haven't done the caboose yet with, a, uh, with any uh, resistors on them yet and changed out the wheel sets. 
Um, have not picked up that yet. I've been kind of working on some other stuff that was a little bit more important than getting all that stuff right there done. So I have not done up my cabooses yet. Now you can see over here, this is actually cleared. We're actually sitting inside this block right here. If I roll too far past this point, it'll actually go ahead and kick off onto another sensor which has not been programmed yet. So if I, once again, I'll go ahead and I'll back up the train. And as soon as that that box here goes ahead and hits that spot, it'll go ahead and light up the other section. So that's just how I went ahead and did up all this stuff. Um, like I said, it's really easy to go ahead and program all these sensors. Um, one of the biggest things is, is to go ahead and program your DS64s or BDL-168s, um, the BD4s. Um, go ahead and assign them with an address first before you plug it into an actual uh, your JMRI program, all these are going to have all these basic addresses, which is really no big deal. Um, and then once it comes up, you won't have to worry about anything because when you bring up all your sensors, your sensors will automatically line up right through here. And you, you, for your turnouts, your turnouts end up the same way. You can go and click on turnouts. Here's all my turnouts that I have into here so far. Um, as you press turnouts, it will actually go ahead and recognize. Um, all of your turnouts. So this way here you don't have to uh, worry about anything. If you see right there, it just added a turnout in. Uh, right here it goes 101, 103. Right there, there's 102. All I did is I just went ahead and pushed the turnout. As soon as Digitrax recognizes anything that's being changed, GMRI will then go ahead and recognize it and go ahead and add it all in there. So here I have 101, 102, 103, 104, but I don't have 5 or 6 yet, and 5 or 6 are over here. Uh, let's see here now. There's 5, and then 6 I don't have hooked up yet. 8 and 9, and then 10, 11, and 12. So automatically, GMRI will go ahead and recognize everything, put up everything up in there. Um, inside your sensor catalog, it will show everything that's through here on all your tags and stuff. I haven't really figured out all the routes yet. I haven't went ahead and quite done them all up. Um, I just did a test route. Uh, when you do a test route, it will automatically go ahead and throw all turnouts into that section. When you go ahead and enter it all in there, everything will go ahead and start throwing all the turnouts accordingly. And with the BDL-168, as a train goes ahead and rolls through a block, you can set a turnout to automatically go ahead and throw. So your train's actually in the clear, and you don't have to worry about anything else. It'll automatically go ahead and run all that stuff for you. Um, but anyhow, this is how I went ahead and did up my, my, um, my layout. It's nothing perfect. It's far from that right now. I still have a lot to do yet. The things that I don't like is that everything has to be kind of squared off and stuff. I haven't really sat down and stretched everything out the way I would like it to be done. have not programmed all my sensors up in there or anything else. So once when I go ahead and get all that stuff done, we'll go ahead and start running more trains coming through and, and start adding more stuff to this. Um, I still have to go ahead and add more resistors to my cars. Um, I've got a lot of cars to go ahead and get done. There's still um, a lot of other work that has to be done. I've gotten a lot more wiring done um, lately. Just started working on the uh, the yard wiring to go ahead and uh, work on that stuff. Um, however, I'm not going to get too set up on wiring up my yard yet because I, I need to go ahead and get some remote tortoise mounts for everything that's inside of my yard and uh, get all my tortoises and stuff mounted up underneath there before I really get too in depth with wiring any of that stuff. So I only have just a couple of temporary feeder wires dropped and stuff like that. Now you can see right here I just entered into another section just to show you guys how it all works. Um, the crossovers I'll go ahead and label off all that stuff so you know so that whoever's operating my layout will actually go ahead and see this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to build an actual panel that will be built up onto my wall and everything will be lit up with LEDs as far as right where all the trains are so anybody that comes into my house and wants to go ahead and run trains on my layout, they can go ahead and be able to see right where everything is. It makes it a lot more easy to uh, to do stuff like that, and especially if you have a uh, little boy or little girl that wants to go to run trains, why the easier it is, the better off you'll be. And uh, my daughter, she's, she's really starting to love this now. She's getting excited for scenery. Not too far off from that, but we're still working out some bugs. Um, 
Anyhow, I hope you guys enjoy. Feel free to go ahead and comment if there's any other questions or anything else like that about the GMRI program or the BL 168s or anything else like that. I'd be more than happy to go ahead and answer them. Um, I will be having a couple more videos going uh, coming up and uh, show you guys how to go ahead and do up some more of this stuff. Um, as far as that's concerned, there's been a lot of work. Sorry, I haven't got uh, a whole lot of videos up. Um, the wheel sets were taking some time. I had to go ahead and redo an area. Um, I'll show you guys that really quick. Um, I had to go ahead and redo this area right through here, coming up into my yard. And um, went ahead and got this piece right here down. Going to add in another track up over here for the locomotives. And uh, get my switching tower in back up in over here because this will be a removable piece so I can access my hidden staging up underneath on my B staging. And then, of course, my north staging up over here. This will, all my rock faces here will all have to be removable. So, well, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I got a few other videos that will be coming up. And um, I'll show you guys how to. Uh, wire up some uh, safety features with uh, DCC and um, so if, uh, if there is a short circuit on a uh, on a section of track you can go ahead and isolate it and, and know where your problem is in a, in a fairly quick hurry um, anyhow I'll go ahead and I'll get up off onto some of that stuff in the next couple of videos here thanks again for watching please feel free to comment or ask any questions of anything that's going on or or any other videos you guys would like me to go ahead and do up. Anything more I can be a little bit more in depth on. Um, be greatly appreciated. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and do up some more videos. And uh, thanks again for watching. Happy YouTubing and happy model railroading. Thanks for watching.